Welcome to the island of Dominica for new culinary discoveries. Dominica is a small island situated between Martinique and Guadeloupe. Mass tourism hasn't yet reached its shores, and if you ask me, that's a good thing. The capital, with its colorful houses, is called Roseau. Leaning against the Caribbean Sea is the new marketplace. It's here where I'll spend some of the morning. Dominica has about 75,000 inhabitants, most of whom originate from Africa. I'm going to meet up with Daphne. Hello, Daphne, how are you? Hello, fine, thank you. So here we are at the markets this Saturday morning. Do you come here often to do your shopping? Yes, I come here twice a month to do a big shop. On Saturday mornings, I come to shop for fruit and other things, every Saturday. It's a very big market. It stretches all the way to the ocean, which is very pleasant. So do people come here every Saturday? Does it last all day? What time does it start in the mornings? How does it work? Every Saturday. Well, it starts Friday night. Friday nights when people go out. They pass by the markets before going home, and they can come here to buy their vegetables, green bananas, things like that. Does that mean you can shop at 3 in the morning? Of course. Well, that's very Dominican. Yes, it's a particularity of Dominican. Tell me, here's a central building, then all around it are the traders. How's this all organized? OK, in the central building, that is where people buy in order to sell to others. For all the other traders around, they are just people, farmers and the like. They are selling what they grow, and they come every Saturday to sell it direct to the public. OK. And sometimes for the storeholders, they have customers who come every Saturday just to buy from them. So what we'll do is I'll leave you to do your shopping because I know you have things to buy. I'm in the meanwhile going to satisfy my curiosity and have a look around and we'll catch up a little later, OK? okay? See you later. See you later. So I leave Daphne to do her shopping while I'm taking advantage of being here early before too many customers arrive so that I can talk to a few stall holders. The stalls are colourfully arranged. These new markets have replaced the old market which was in the centre of town. It's a real Caribbean market. Here's someone selling something interesting. It's cassava. Hello. Hello. How are you? Fine, thanks. And you? Oh, I thought you spoke Creole. Yes, I speak Creole. Can you explain to me what you're selling? Well, as you see, I sell cassava, either in sachet or by the piece. They are made with cassava root flour, and believe me, it's good. You have to boil them and cook them, and if it's good quality flour, they are really very good. Could you show me one, please? There are two types, plain and with coconut. Oh, it's with coconut? No, this one is plain. Without coconut, OK. This one is with grated coconut. That one's with coconut. And there's the difference. Are they eaten with the same things or are they eaten differently? The same. The difference is the price. The ones with coconut are $5 for three. $5? Yes. Here? Here. This one? Same price. Same price. Thank you. Oh, I think you have a customer. I'll leave you to do your business. Thank you. Goodbye. The sound of the conch reminds me that it's time for the first recipe. It's based on the most consumed fowl, chicken. I'll leave the centre of town of Rosso for its surrounding area. Before seeing in detail how to make Creole chicken, here are the ingredients you'll need to serve two people. To start, the chef, Joseph, chops up the onions finely. Then he cuts the peppers, taking care to remove the seeds. He also chops them up finely. These peppers are mild and are essential in many Creole dishes. Same thing with the garlic. Joseph peels and chops it.
Now for the parsley. Then the celery, which adds an aniseed flavour. He chops the red cabbage, which will serve as a salad. Dices the tomato. And then Joseph seasons the star of this recipe, the chicken fillets. Now over to the kitchen. Joseph pours a little oil on the hot plate. You could also use a griddle if you have one. And he grills the chicken fillets. In a big pan, he now prepares the sauce. He melts the butter, then adds the onion. Then the garlic and the sweet peppers. He turns over the chicken fillets. After a minute, he adds the tomatoes, then the two teaspoons of ketchup. He seasons it with salt and pepper. And now the chicken's cooked. He waters down the sauce with 100 milliliters of water. It's time now for the chicken to join this preparation for five minutes. The Creole chicken is ready. Joseph decorates the plate. He cuts up portions of the chicken and prepares for it a soft bed of red cabbage. Coats this with the sauce. All that's left to do is taste this ever so easy to make recipe. Well, here I am back at the market at Rosseau. A small hall offers a refuge in case of rain. It's cooler than outside where this morning is starting to heat up. There are a lot of fruit and vegetables here, some that I don't know at all. There, for example, there's a pile of roots. Hello, good morning. Could you explain to me what this tuber is? This is ado. It's a kind of provision. You peel it, wash it, and put it well together. You, you cook it just like this or this. Like plantain, cocoa, green bananas, different things, because it's a kind of food. And it's just like Irish potato. When you peel it, you put it in your plate to eat. You eat it just like the other. And what's that called? Well, you dig in the hole, plant it. When you plant it, when it grows, you dig in it to get the fruit from it. It has big one and small one. So, and this is yam. What did you say it was called? Yam. Yam. Mm -hmm. And how do we cook it? Is it good? But is it good? Every year. That one comes every year. Have you been working at the market a long time? I can't tell you, because you have a long time since I did. Merci beaucoup. Thanks a lot. Bye. I'm off to the markets again, to the sound of Cecilia's laughter. A lovely sound. I'm heading to the fishmongers. So Daphne told me to meet her here by the fishmongers. I should point out that they seem to be mostly women. 
There's Daphne. How are you, Daphne? Good. And you, Pascal? So, I gather you're buying some fish. Yes, I'm buying fish. There is so much fish. There's red fish, mai mai, and other types as well. Speaking of the little red fish, I imagine they're fried. They come from the sea, but how do you prepare it? Are they eaten a lot? We cook the red fish with fresh vegetables, so normally that would be eaten on Saturdays. So that's Saturday's meal. Now, this is a popular fish, the kingfish. Yes, that's the kingfish. And how do you prepare a kingfish? Well, fishermen, and especially the wives of fishermen, claim that there are so many ways of cooking them. Fried? Fried, barbecued, Used as a stock, all sorts of ways. Always possible. I saw a fish over there that's, um, it's a bream, I believe, and here they call it mai mai. Mai mai. Can you show it to me? Here, here it is, I think. This fish is, you find it easily on the island, right? It's not too expensive, is it? No, I think the mai mai is a very inexpensive fish. It's a very common fish here on the island. Lots of people eat it and come here to buy it. Is there a particular spot where it's found or is it fished everywhere? No, it's fished especially on the west, northwest and south of the island. This comes from the south of the island at Scott's Head. You're going to buy... It's a fishing village. You're going to buy fish? I'll leave you now, yes. so we'll meet up later. See you later. I leave Daphne to do her shopping, and I meanwhile stay with the Mai Mai, a fish so popular in Dominica that it's impossible to go without the recipe, the grilled Mai Mai Dominican style. It's possible to find this fish at the fishmongers, but it can be replaced by swordfish steaks. These ingredients serve two people. Moulin Bernadine is our chef. The first thing she does is to grate the garlic. Then she removes the main bones from the mai mai steaks, then impregnates them with garlic. She adds salt, and then she coats them with flour. And then she places them on an oven-proof dish. The quiet life of this onion ends in slices. It's enough to make you cry. She adds salt and she grates some more garlic. She slices the tomatoes thinly. She chops up the pepper. One is enough as they are very hot. She crumbles in some thyme. She moistens this with lime juice and finishes with the chopped up garlic. The Mai Mai is then grilled in the oven under a moderate heat, no more than five minutes for each side. The fish must not be overcooked. While the Mai Mai is cooking, Moulin prepares the side dish. Cuts up the lettuce, grates the cucumber. She slices the remaining tomato thinly, but without cutting all the way through with the knife. She cuts the red onion in slices. She puts aside two slices of lemon and some parsley. She 
She cuts up some chives and red pepper for decoration. Moulin likes garlic and chops up some more of it and mixes it with olive oil and salt and a few drops of lime juice to add an acidic taste. The sauce for the side dish is ready. Once cooked, the Mai Mai steaks are plunged into the sauce prepared by Moulin. All the actors are ready for their scenes. Before going back to the market, I'm following Daphne's advice and going to the tip of the island near the fishing village at Scott's Head. By chance, it's the moment when a dozen men are bringing in the fishing nets. On the inside, there are hundreds of fish, half that will be cooked by the women of the village and the rest that will be sold to be fried. I'm back at the market to meet up with Daphne. So, Daphne, this is where you usually buy your coconuts? Yes, this is where I buy coconuts. So, I see the man here's already cut one. Now, what we have to explain is, you know, we don't get coconuts like this in Europe, oh? because these are fresh. Yes, they are fresh. This means that you can drink them. That's why the man's cut them this way, so that you can insert a straw and drink them. It's a drink, and it's also used as a diuretic. There are very young coconuts, and therefore have no milk in them. To have some coconut milk, I bought this one. OK, so you're going to buy one? Yes, the milk is like this, and this part is eaten. That's the drink, and this is eaten. This is used for coconut milk. And this inside is used, not the water, but what's inside to make coconut oil and also soaps, as well as other things. The coconut milk and other things in the food. So to sum up, when they're young like that, it's just a drink? This is for drinking, that is for eating. This man, he harvests them on the island? Coconuts are harvested on the eastern side of the island and also close to the mountains at Girel. Well, I'll give you back your fresh coconut because you must be pretty thirsty and uh, we'll Thank catch you. up later. OK, see you later. For those who have never cut a coconut with a machete, be warned, it takes a lot of practice and care to do it. For the sake of my fingers, I prefer to leave this to someone who's used to doing it. Bananas are the one food staple that we see almost everywhere in the stalls. So this is where they sell fruit and vegetables. Naturally, there are all sorts, but most notably bananas. Hello. Hello. How are you? All right. Uh, bananas. I was wondering if you could explain the difference between the yellow bananas and the green ones there just behind. How are they different? Well, you see the plantain, when you see like this, it's ripe. You can boil it and eat it, or you can fry it, make a dessert, you know? And you will enjoy it. Very nice. You see this one? When it's ripe, you can eat it. You have, it has to. It comes yellow like this when it's ripe. But you cannot eat it now. But you can cook it and eat it. Sase, that is four dollars. Four easy. And this is two easy. So this these is ones are less expensive yes. than these ones? Cheaper than this. OK. Merci Thank you very much. Okay, bye bye. Merci. I leave Latina thinking that we don't use enough bananas in our meals. I have a meeting a few kilometers away to learn how to cook them. 
There are numerous traditional recipes originating in the Caribbean, and most are cooked daily by the Dominicans. We're in the working class area of Roseau at Delia Grells. She's preparing a Dominican meal, plantain bananas with cod. She uses green bananas for this with cod that she has rinsed and desalted for 24 hours, coconut milk, a tomato, onions, a clove of garlic, parsley, and a stick of celery. There's also capsicum, some curry, oil, and salt. To start, Delia peels the bananas under running water to eliminate the bitter membranes. She then boils them in salted water. She adds a dash of lemon to add a little bit of acidity and some oil. After 20 minutes, the bananas are cooked. She slices them. She peels the onions, then the capsicum, carefully removing the seeds. She crushes the garlic to make it easier to peel. She finely chops the parsley and celery. In a stock pot, she heats up some oil, a ladle of water, and a good dose of curry. She then browns the garlic, onion, spices, parsley, and celery, and pours in 300 milliliters of coconut milk. After a minute or two, she adds the bananas. It all has to be stirred well to mix in all the different flavors. After five minutes, she pours in the rest of the coconut milk. She desalted the cod a day earlier. The next step is to crumble and then let it boil. Once it's done, she crumbles it. Delia chops up the capsicum, onion and garlic, and she adds the tomato for color. She adds some oil and onto the hob it goes. She puts in some of the crumbled cod, seasons it accordingly, and adds a special Delia touch, a pinch of hot pepper to wake up the taste buds. This simple to make yet delicious meal is eaten in modest households. In wealthier families, this would be made with meat, notably beef, which is more expensive than fish. The meal is served with grated carrots and celery. The Dominicans drink fresh fruit juice with it. This meal is diuretic as well as balanced, and unlike the neighboring islands such as Martinique and Guadeloupe, they don't eat bread with the meal, but often have fruit fritters which serve as bread. They often say grace before eating. I'm back at the markets at Roseau for the last time. Daphne has promised to introduce me to some local specialities. Just as well as breakfast time is approaching and seeing all this food's making my mouth water. So, Daphne, you wanted to bring me to this corner of the market where they actually make food. People can get fritters or yellow bananas or fish. We find all the same ingredients that we saw at the market this morning. Fish, bananas, and these fritters or donuts. It's good and inexpensive. How much did these two meals cost? And together with the juice, it costs $12. I want to thank you, Daphne, for showing me around this magnificent market, which has so many colors and tastes. And now I'm going to try what you've proposed and say that I hope to see you soon. OK, thank you. Thank you, Daphne. The fish. Flying fish, is it? It's flying fish. Dominica is known as the island of nature, and that name suits it well. It's still authentic, and its inhabitants are both friendly and welcoming. The cuisine is tasty and colorful. The tourists are few who, having fallen in love with this island, keep the pleasures of it a secret. One day, I'll come back to Dominica myself. Maybe. <laughs>